Hello, I'm Jerry. And I'm Amy, and we are No House, No Debt, No, no problem. problem. Today we're going to give you a tour of the outside of our rig and show you a little bit about the lot and tell you a little bit about what we've learned through the process of living stationary in an RV. Also, we'll go through uh, the loan process. It did not go the way we thought it was going to go, mm -mm. and uh, particularly because of our un unique situation. Before we get to that outside tour, we wanted to ask you for your help. If you have anything that you're cu curious about as far as RV living or this uh, debt-free journey that we're going through, uh, send us questions in the, in the comments. All right, we're gonna start up front here, up under the hitch, this area. We have two compartments. This one holds two 30 pound uh, propane tanks. And this one, I kind of use it as our little garage. My tool area, it's got a little latch space there. I just keep tools, heater, uh, extra propane for emergencies. It does have a slam latch, which I really like. Amy, if we come around here, this compartment houses the hydraulics, hydraulic connections there. It does have an automatic leveling system. And over here, we have our main compartment, our main basement area. It is passed through all the way, a huge amount of storage. Yes, it's, it's a little unorganized at the moment, but don't judge. Anyway, we're working on that. Lots of space. I'll show you the other side in a minute. It has a uh, spray port here that connects to the uh, outside shower on the other, other side. It has an outlet, outdoor speakers. Can you get the awning? It has a fantastic awning here. All right, let me show you the outdoor kitchen. Very cool space. Cabinets we use it for extra storage, microwave. Even has a little sink in here and a little fridge. Cool space. It does not have a grill built into that one, but there's a swing arm grill, little propane grill over here all right so that now swings around and actually comes toward the kitchen where you can cook and have your yeah. outdoor kitchen open yep yeah. yep yeah. all right on this side is the other side of the pass through storage again lots and lots of room here's the main water board um which that's our has our fresh water fill city water fill um black tank gray tank empty of the main ones our secondary tanks uh you empty them down there and has your flush flush out system here, All right? And then our last uh, compartment is where we keep the inverter, the level up system, and our batteries. All in all, it has five slides on this rig. All right. One of the things that makes our site so awesome is that for us in particular, there is no one behind us. So this actually backs up to where the tents used to be. So now that you will get an occasional pop-up or you might get um, a very, very small RV. But other than that, we have the whole backyard, which seems to ourselves. People do cut through here to go to the um, office. But other than that, that's what makes it cool as well. So the other thing that makes this site nice as well is that we have this privacy fence along the front, so there's no one in front of us. On the other side is where they keep a lot of their equipment and the trash can and things like that. So over there, we don't we don't really have anyone in front of us. That's our side. And then we have our little area for picnic when we decide to use our outdoor kitchen. And then we've got a little place that we have, you know, our fires and for sitting around the fire and things like that. And then from here, you can actually see down when you're sitting over here to the little lake area. So overall, it's extremely private where we are, which makes it really, really nice in this particular spot. 
All right, so we started looking once we decided what kind of rig we wanted, or at least the general style. We knew we wanted a fifth wheel. We found one, went and loved it, and started the whole process of financing. Turns out we couldn't quite meet uh, eye to eye or see eye to eye on the price. We were mm -hmm. very close, but just we didn't, all of a sudden we didn't have a good feeling about it, and it wasn't the price we wanted, so we walked away from it. And um, we found out, got a letter about a week later saying we had been denied uh, that loan. Or, you know, we yeah. wouldn't have qualified. And that was weird to us because we had qualified for a really nice house if we wanted to when we thought about downsizing. We got approved for more. I think it was like 380. 380 and of course, we weren't any near wanting to be anywhere near that because we're trying to downsize. So it was just odd. It just made us feel weird. Yeah, the type of rig we were looking at was like in the low 50s. And here we could buy a house for almost 400000 but not a not no. a so RV for was just 50. Weird. So we're like, what in the world's going on? So we found out later um, when we did actually happen to get to another dealership, found the one that we're in now that we loved. We, we learned through that process that the issue was we didn't have a permanent address. Where we were getting our mail did not match what our driver's license said. We hadn't switched it o over yet. So on paper, we're, it's a high risk because you can you know, take your home anywhere you want and mm -hmm. they can't find you. Uh, so we, it turns out we wound up getting a product from our own bank through that dealership. Um, it just, the terms were a little bit different. It was a slightly higher uh, interest rate. Was it six, five or something like that? It was 6. a little 5. bit higher interest rate and they required a little bit more, um, more down, Yeah, which was fine because that's just less we owe. We had thought we'd pay 5% down. We wound up paying 15% mm -hmm. uh, down. They originally wanted us to buy a more expensive rig, like 75,000 or greater. And we, we No, we're not gonna do that. The whole purpose is to downsize. Downsize what we're paying every month as well. So because of our credit and putting 15% down and stuff like that, we were able to get this loan. But the interesting thing is, you know, if anybody ever considers, you know, selling and, and living somewhere temporarily, you can actually buy the RV before you sell a lot, a lot cheaper interest rate and a lot less. Yeah. If we had it to do over, we would have bought it before we sold our house as a, a, lu know. a luxury item and just would have been, been easier. But you know, you live and you learn. Right. So speaking of learning, uh, what have we learned about uh, stationary RV living? I mean, we, we bought it with the intent of not moving it. Once we found a spot, we'd stay put. So what have we learned? Well, I think the important thing that we learned was um, figuring out where you can stay. Um, there are a lot of county laws, just like there are in housing laws, that you, that you can't stay, you know, in an RV park permanently or semi-permanently. As a matter of fact, the one that we're in has an an expansion, a really nice expansion, and the most that you can stay in there is three months. This particular part, since it's been here so long, has been grandfathered in. And so that's an important thing to know if you're if you're staying somewhere any length of time, how long can you stay before you actually have to move it? That was a huge consideration for us. Absolutely. Because we wouldn't have, you know, chosen this route if we weren't able to no. leave it sitting here for the at least two years that we talked about. Of course just like a house when you're buying any kind of house, you want to make sure you feel safe. Yep. And that is in a location that you want to be. Um, and I would say the other draw for us was the what's included in our site. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, we I'm going to go back to the safety part just for a second because we had bought the older camper and stayed here in this campground for like six weeks. I and mean, we had a feel for it, mm -hmm. and and we knew it was it was a safe place to be. And also we felt good about that. But then um, we also had learned that everything with the monthly uh, bill, uh, the monthly fee was included, such as electricity, trash, um, internet, water, and sewer. So all of that, just one flat fee. And uh, it did go up. The old camper was 30 amp and the new rig is 50, so it went up 50, uh, $50. And that was last year, uh, toward the end of last year, and they told everybody that their fees were going to go up by 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. But still, you know, that was a huge factor in deciding, you know, where we were going to stay and, you know, that we could stay and what was included in our site. The other thing I think that was uh, that was a consideration for us that if you've ever thought about doing anything long term or, or you know in an, in an RV is to think about who you're going to get to do any kind of repairs if you don't know how to do it and especially for us our rig is new so it's under warranty yep. so how are we going to do warranty work if we're not going to be dragging yep. it back to the RV dealership remember we That's didn't buy a truck um, I have a, a regular half-ton truck and it can't pull this 
um, and we knew that going in. So uh, that's something to consider. Just so happens, mm -hmm. um, the the person who actually told us about this campground um, is our guy. You know, you got a guy, we got a guy. Yeah, and uh, he's that's really what close. He does. Yeah, he's able to do warranty work. So when we call, and that's really important too, if you're staying in your camper for any length of time, because sometimes if you take it back to a dealership, they will have it there for weeks. And it, it's it's fine if it's your recreational vehicle, but if you're staying in something as on a semi-permanent or permanent basis, then that's your home. You know, yeah. you can't you can't leave it there. So that's an important thing to consider as well. And you know, will will they be allowed to do the warranty work? And and that was one of the things that we found out right away was that he we knew that he was certified in in, in the company. And we've called um, Forest River and, and talked directly to them and got him to do work for us before without ever ever having to move it. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Well, again, I'm Jerry and I'm Amy. And thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to our channel. And until next time, have a good one. Hey everybody, welcome to our home. We are in our 44 QBOK, right? It's Forest River Sandpiper. Tagum. All right, can I just stand here? Yeah. Forest River Sandpiper 34 BOA. QBOK. 384. 384 QBOK. Yeah. Porter Queen, Road House. No, Queen Bedroom Outdoor Kitchen. Queen Bedroom Outdoor Kitchen. Okay, ready? Harder again. I know. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. Give me a minute. Don't put that in the blue first. Okay, ready? Please. You, you're, you do things that you're not supposed to do after I requested it. Okay. Welcome to our home. We are in our Sandpiper 34 QB. Forks River. Sandpiper. Okay. We need a cue card. <laughs> okay, where do we live? Okay, ready? <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our home. Um, we live in a Sandpiper. Okay, Forks River the Sandpiper. Okay, ready? <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for coming and touring our rig with us. We are in a Forest River Sandpiper QB OK. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a 384 QB OK. <laughs> okay, 384 QB OK. Ready? Mm hmm. Hang on. <laughs> I need a word to say other than hello. Why? Because every time I say hello, I get to hello. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> what about to say hey? Hey. But no, that's nice too. Hi. See, I always sound weird saying hi. Alright. What else? Hello. Does that sound like creepy? Ready? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you do it again. Oh Alright, I gotta stop. Okay. It's the way you say hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Yeah. Um. Like what, was, <laughs> what was the first? Hello, my name is Jerry and I'm Amy. I'm Jerry. Well, I'm saying, what okay. you say? <laughs> I don't know my name. I'm Jerry. I don't know. And we, we are. are. I say, and we are. Oh, okay. You say, no debt. No, what is no, that? I do that every step. Money. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How's step. Okay, ready? Start again. Good night, Jerry. We need to get this down pat. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's stop. Get right, it Okay. Hello, I'm Jerry. I'm Amy, and we are no house, no debt, no, no problem. problem. Today, <laughs> we're gonna laugh about it. Um, today we're gonna continue our tour, but this time include the. No, we're just gonna be dull. Alright, ready? Come on. Here we go. Alright. Today. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I'm doing okay. Today. You should be a producer. Um, hang on. Today we're going to. Re so as far as. <laughs> I'm not confident. Reset. All right, ready? Ready? Okay. So, as far as our loan process goes, 